question? That's Gloves Good Luck. Well, heavyweight stepping into the ring, Jesse Boston from Trenton, New Jersey, against a gentleman from Zambia in Africa, Josie Joseph Jin Zinjungu as Jindungu. Did you take a look at him? Is seven and one coming to the action here today for round number one of a schedule eight rounder. And Boston is going to be quite a challenge for him. He's only six, two, and one. But despite the fact he said he has not had a fight in quite a while, he did come back in April and quickly dispensed of Tony Williams. And feels like he may be back in the groove of making a little bit of note here now in the heavyweight division. Both these guys normally are cruiserweights. Chingungu normally fighting right around the 190, but has stepped up to 196, which is 88 and 9 in kilograms, and 204, 92 and 5 for Boston today. And Boston's come out in the right-handed stance, Sam. Uh, he oftentimes fights as a southpaw. He can go both ways. He's going to try to confuse Joseph Chingungu coming out with the one and then switching up on him later in the fight, I'm quite sure, because he's he's a cutie. Jin Gungu trained by Harold Bulbrick in his corner, Malcolm Garrett as well. And it'll be interesting to see what they do pick up between rounds because Jin Gungu is a fighter that is very apt at adapting to whatever style he has to fight. He'll bang with you or he'll stand outside and box. Right now he's trying to figure out Boston here in round one. He's got to press Jesse Boston here. He can't stand on the outside and box with him, Sam. That, that's suicide for him. He's just, he's in with a slick boxer. He's going to shift on the outside, box. He can fight from the inside. He use, tucks his chin down low between his shoulders. He's a hard guy. You've got to force this guy to fight to get him into some exchanges. That's what Joseph's got to do. He's got to pressure this guy. He, he can't stand on the outside and box with him. He'll get countered all night. You also have been seeing here in round number one a good left hook being thrown by Boston. That time he lunged with a straight right hand. Chingungu was able to step away from it. Boston again, you can see that he is very apt at being a stalker. And Chingungu must be aware of that fact as he tries to inch his way in now. This slow, laborious pace is, is favors Jesse Boston in this fight. Joseph's got to get in his behind. I know that he, you know, with coming into the ring once and then uh, going back again, he's probably not warmed up the way he'd like to be, but he's got to press this guy. He's got to force him to fight. This guy's going to stand on the outside here and shift his weight and monkey shine on him all night. That's what he needs to do. Walk to him with a jab, just like he's trying to do now, Joseph. I'm sure that's what Harold's going to tell him in between rounds. Boston, the older of the two at 29, Chingungu at 24. And of course, the duration of Boston during this fight. How much will be able to... The big punches thrown by Boston as they close in on the end of round number one. Joseph landed a great clean... If you're bargain or have thinning hair... Joseph Chingungu in the white trunks, Jesse Boston in the black with a red stripe entertaining the crowd in round number one as they both threw some pretty good fireworks Bob how about your scorecard did one or the other get an advantage of the other in the first round I gave Boston the first round based on the first two minutes and 50 seconds of the round obviously the last 10 seconds belong to Joseph and he expects to carry that on into the second round of this fight he knows what he's got to do he's got to force this fight and throw straight punches at Jesse Boston so the old adage that a fighter sometimes is able to steal a round with a final punch on our unofficial card did not work. Now, as far as the adjustments are concerned, we anticipated that Harold Volbrick would be talking to Chingungu in between rounds. What does he have to try to do other than what he was able to get away at the end of round one, Bob? Well, at the end of the round, he, he finally forced an exchange, which he needs to do. He needs to back Boston up and walk to him with that good, strong jab of his. But right here, he's standing in the middle of the ring with him, which favors Boston. He needs to back him up, walk to him with the jab, and force exchanges. Chengungu, the taller of the two by about two inches. 6-1 to 5-11. Now Brian Omelia, the referee, is encouraging both to put a little bit more action in there for this fans. But hey, they love what happened at the end of the first round. Don't just waltz around, guys. Let's get something done. I'm not sure I totally agree that a referee has to do that, Bob, but it does make for an entertaining fight, I guess. No, really. It, it takes one guy out of doing what he wants to do, which is Boston wanting to slow down the pace of this fight and pick his shots. 
and it, it kind of favors Joseph. But hey, people are paying, they're coming to see a fight, and that's what they'd like to see. Bob is Jim Gungo starting to lunge a little more in round two, trying to trying to land that punch first. And he got taught with a right hook very well. And then caught with another right hand and left hand that puts him down. That was a slip, I thought. Their legs got tangled up with each other, but I'm not hey. sure what's wrong with Joseph here. Boy, I tell you, he got hit. I'm telling you, he got hit with one punch. Now they're calling it a knockdown. Yeah, he got hit with a punch. They may have got tangled up, but he definitely was hit. And you can see the face of Joseph Chingungo. He is stunned. And here comes Boston. A right hand over the top. And another standing eight count. So two knockdowns in this round already. And Boston is anxious to get it over with. Will they let it go? They will. There's enough time for Boston. Maybe too much time for Chingungu. And Boston goes right to work. They need to stop this fight. And they do. Bob Spagnola had said that watch out for Jesse Boston because this was going to be a tough fight with Joseph Chingungu. I cannot help believe that the missing mouthpiece that kind of took both fighters a little bit out of the rhythm might not have hurt, hurt Chingungu more than Jesse Boston. And what a man with a mission today. And let's watch some of the replays. And again, the first knockdown. They almost were going to rule this a slip, but watch this punch. To the chest, and then he comes back with another one here. Right there was a straight left hand. I mean, he, he hit him with a jab, which I didn't think that there was that much on it. That's the second knockdown where he had yeah. Joseph in trouble in the corner and hit him with an overhand right hand. And wisely, the referee steps in for a standing eight count and was looking at the eyes of Chingungu right there to stop it. He did let it go on, and this is the end of the fight when the referee finally steps in and says, that's it, no moss. Look at Boston throw those punches. Boston knew he had his man in trouble and a, and a lot of... And a lot of punches like that would force the referee to come in and stop the fight, and that's exactly what happened. Well, that's the way it ended. Here again is Michael Buffer with the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brian O'Melia stops about at 2 minutes 43 seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO victory from Trenton, New Jersey, Jesse Austin. Boston may only have a 7-2-1 record right now, but his third knockout has shown that as a heavyweight or a cruiserweight, he packs a punch and does today as he defeats Joseph Chingungu here today on our heavyweight explosion from Atlantic City, New Jersey.